Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Um, today's video is a discussion. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback from different people from different backgrounds saying I should do another one. And that's always cool to kind of take it as a cue to do one rather than just talking a whole bunch about nothing. <laughs> so this comment here is from Abstract. He said, uh, yesterday, here I was waiting for your live 10 demo to run out so we can get back to software that actually deserves more coverage. I'm salty. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. And cause it's interesting to, for me to perceive what do people mean by that? And I had pointed that out to them. I normally go with the flow. And that's pretty much the root of what my discussion is gonna be is finding flow, finding where attention and energy meet and how to do things that are effortless to you. Um, and that's been a theme for the past month or so. A lot of different roadblocks per se that I'm seeing and walking straight through are been people who perceive that I'm changing flow or my flow is in a different direction than theirs and that then they speak up. Whereas prior, no one said anything. Um, and that's very curious to me considering what changed in the last couple of weeks. And to be honest with you, the only thing that changed is that a very prolific engineer by the name of Young Guru retweeted me on Twitter. So I'm still trying to navigate what that means in terms of what I've been doing and what people haven't even seen yet. Like I have old videos that people haven't watched that would answer all the questions that people have today. And I understand that our attention and our time is very important. So people, most people don't have time to go backwards. But for me, if you're just tuning in and seeing me, I'm always going forward. <laughs> so a lot of things I don't double down on because I've talked about it already. Unfortunately, I don't have a system to uh, translate the videos to text like some of the more famous or prolific people do to where you could keyword it and make like a search engine on your website. So when someone asks me a question about, yo, how do you make a sub base and reason? You could type that and then that video comes up. I think Gary Vaynerchuk has one of those search engines for his videos. I need that. If you got the plug on that, let me know. But anyway, um, abstract then says, personally, I'm missing the discussion videos the most in terms of tutorials and things to see. I'd love to see more sound design stuff. Maybe just flip the reason rack around and see where things go. So uh, um, automation and modulation stuff. I don't usually have specific requests. Boom. Because this is stuff I didn't know to ask about that I usually find the most useful. And that was the most eye opening experience. This particular person the subscriber goes i prefer your discussions and i prefer discovery and those words are very different than i want to know how to make a trap beat or how to make lo-fi and that's been the general consensus even in instagram and my dms um I've, I've been overwhelmed with like humbleness out of the amount of people that hit me up on instagram going yo i appreciate what you do i love what you do one gentleman hit me up was like yo I've been making beats since X, but then, you know, I had kids and my kids like music. I'm teaching my kids how to make music now and I'm using your videos to teach myself again so I can teach them so that they have a chance at making it. And that, that grounded me. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. And then other people from other countries specifically, like, yo, I've been making beats for two years. I live in a country where equipment is hard to come by. I appreciate your tutorials because now I know I can achieve that thing without it, at least for now using software. Um, just a lot of gratitude on a foreign level, <laughs> on a local level, different story. Um, and that <laughs> reminds me of something. Uh, I talked to my cousin last night. I haven't, he hasn't been here in maybe a year. Um, we're doing new South Kings together prior, maybe three years ago, um, where I did a lot of music, a lot of hard work, I should say. And, um, we've gotten the millions of plays, millions of views. And still relatively no one knows what that is. And in that experience, I learned that uh, the numbers don't mean as much as impact. Because prior, I was talking about the messages are signs of impact. Whereas me being a beat maker in a collective making beats was numbers. <clears throat> Even though my channel seems to be growing pretty fast, I've been sitting under 2,000 Instagram followers for over a year. I've been sending under 10,000 YouTube subscribers for eight. Um, the perception of 
who I am is not a number thing, it's an impact thing. Um, so I try to value and respect that by not churning out a bunch of cliche content. And I challenge you guys to do the same thing when it comes to making beats, whether it's tight beats, whether it's chasing down Mr. MC Shiny Chain, whether it's exploring and figuring out your own sound, whatever that means, um, to not get caught up in numbers ever because it will destroy you. It will it will give you a false impression of what's going on. It's a it's a poor compass to follow. And I know we're kind of trained to do that because of deadlines and team meetings and you know, even the record industry, the first week sales, everything is number based. But the number based stuff does not ever match to impact. And I would argue to say the energy of impact and attention is way more powerful than the numbers. Even when you get to things like money. There's a lot of people with a lot of money who are miserable. So that can't be the the criteria for your success or progress. And I learned that a long time ago. So now that I'm having conversations with people that seem to be about numbers, um, it's just weird that you can't convince number people to pay attention to impact because most people don't know what that is. So hopefully I can help you guys do that. Um, I want to kind of deviate because I was talking about my cousin, but my cousin, we're, we're talking all about <laughs> all kinds of stuff. We started talking about the music thing. We started talking about how clouds are made. <laughs> we started talking about, you know, <laughs> why that ship in the Black Panther movie looked like a craft I've seen in real life. Why? Why's? We start talking about why's and then we start talking about passions and um, how I live in my particular area in North Carolina that a lot of people have super talent but they don't have super passion. So I always have this running joke, like there's this one kid I run into at the mall or the store all the time. He's like, yo, MG, you still doing music? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, let's trade phone numbers. Yeah. And um, he said, well, I'm gonna hit you up this weekend. Yeah. And I swear it's like Groundhog's Day because every time I see him, every three, six, nine, a year, months, he says the same thing and it never happens. Or I have other people who are extremely talented they always have one more song when I see them, but never the full project. Or another person will call, they always have one more plan and one more studio and one more everything, but never a project or a website. And it's gotten to the point where I've seen this deja vu so much that I, I'm kind of becoming a little bit agnostic about people in this area. And that's pretty much what I was telling my cousin is that I'm not chasing that goal anymore as a producer at my age because I've been hearing the same story and it hasn't changed. And I know I don't have the coolness or the team captain spirit to change that. I may inspire people technically to achieve things that they didn't know how to do, but my gift isn't to get people to do it. And I've experienced this in a very small social experiment within chat rooms that I'm part of, or we call them group chats now. And I'll tell someone or group of people things that I think are so mind expanding and so big and so important to get to impact that I watch the responses and pushback and I go, wow, no one's ready for that. Most people are still romantic about what, what it is that we do. And how can you not be? I mean, I look at my desk and all this gear and the cool lights that I added, and this is very beautiful. Like, it's easy to come here now and sit down and be like, just grateful for how blessed I am, but also like, it just shit is cool. Like, there's, there's no two ways about it. This is cool. Like, the lights and everything and how it looks is cool. And I think a lot of people get into it <laughs> because it's cool, not because they want to do something, though. And that's something that's different about me. I always want to do something. That's why I'm doing remixes. <laughs> I notice a lot of people are trying to figure out the secrets of how to remix. And these are people who say they uh, follow me and subscribe to me. I've done the whole video of how to do that. And they still ask me. And that's mind boggling to me because I did it two weeks ago. It wasn't an old video, you know what I mean? And people still wonder how I do it. And <laughs> almost felt like I started to crack a little bit, like, <laughs> what's going on? But no, it's because of the doing. People may hear the information, watch the first five, ten minutes of these videos, except for you that like these discussions. 
but they don't actually hear me. Because then every time I review something, which goes back to things I didn't know to ask about, I always share an angle of how to use it as a producer, but not for me. I can think of the people who are on a different path and go, yo, you can flip it like this, like Melodyne. Yes, yeah, for correcting voice, guitar, piano, orchestra performances, but you could flip it and figure out the bass line to a sample too. Or you could flip it and get some chords if you pay a little bit more money for the polyphonic version. Like that was way ahead of its time. Like I recently watched a Static Select uh, Deconstructed and I started laughing out loud because he was showing Melodyne and how he got the bass line. He was like, he was the only one that does that. And it blew, I blew up laughing is because he may be right in his circle, but I've been on rapmusic.com since 2002 when Melodyne was announced. I told you guys this story before where DJ Quick was describing Melodyne before it existed. And because of him, I believe it exists. And when it first came out, I was already doing the forum conversations about how to use it to do with Static Selected and, of course, what I do. But if he's the only one that does it, then it makes me think of my impact back then that no one was paying attention to what I was explaining. They didn't get it. And then when I fast forward a little bit, looking at some of the questions I get now, no one was paying attention to what was still to what I'm doing with it. Um, those are my weaknesses. Those are my shortcomings because I don't know how to reposition that information to wake people up to the genius of that program. Even and if you watch the Deconstructed with De Static Selector, I have a feeling a whole bunch of producers watch that and they still don't get it. The why. They get what it is. They don't get why. They don't get why it's $800 for studio and $400 for a plug-in version. Um, and that's not something... You don't know it until you need it. I think that's what it really boils down to. I may talk about things that people don't need on the level that they're on, and I have no way of gauging that. Um, but with all that being said, I still have like this remarkable ignorance about going forward anyway. <laughs> I still help people and answer the questions, even if it's the hundredth time, I still do it. I still try to approach it like, I don't have to be sarcastic or smart or very Sagittarius about this. I can just answer the daggone question if that's going to help them go to the next step. And I perceive eventually the next step for most people will be doing, or maybe not. Maybe it's the 85% rule, right? 85% are just here. Then there's the 10 and the five who know better and then do better. And I'm fine with that too. But I tried my best to make myself available to everyone now. But um, to pick up on what my cousin was saying about that, with the focus and the people in our area, um, because what he was trying to figure out is, or what I perceive he was asking, what he was really asking without asking it, because he's an Aquarius. So they feel deeper than most people or signs. And you don't have to believe in Zodiacs or stuff. That's just how my brain has uh, analyzed people. It just helps me put people in loose boxes to help me deal with how I respond to them, I should say. But anyway, with him being Aquarius, with my perception of what that actually means and all the other Aquariuses that gravitate towards me, um, they feel where I don't. So based on how he approaches me, he uses words with emotional values. And basically he was like telling me to not give up on him as a creative and for me, not to give up on the original dream or vision, which is to be a creative and not an analytical teacher. And that was powerful because he didn't know how to say that. Um, but I, I knew how to hear it. And we talked about everything else, but that kind of haunted me. It was like, don't give up, grind your face off. You know, if no one else does it, you can do it. If And that's the, the loop in my head. If no one else is doing it, then you're doing it. <laughs> and that's my advice to you. Don't, depending on what uh, track you're on or path you're on, if no one else is doing it where you are, then you're supposed to do it. If you can't find it, it's you. If you're looking for it and you can't find it, it's because it's you, it's in the mirror. Um, and that's why I got get kind of irritated when people copy, copy my YouTube tutorials, is because I'm like, I already exist here, cut it out, do a different one. <laughs> because you'll get way more impact instead of chaining the YouTube algorithm to make me all of your suggested videos. It doesn't make sense. It's bad for your business. 
is bad for attention or the fact that all deaf digital is copying the on the spot sessions from machine masters. That shit's corny to me. Why would you even choose the phrasing and vocabulary that machine masters has been using for over three, four or five years and then do your all deaf digital thing with producers and just mirror that content. And then it begins to blur. And even with the all deaf digital machine, which uses marketing and social engineering, what you'll end up inevitably doing is having outlinks from your videos, copying the verbiage of machine masters and sending more people to machine masters. So you can't be too mad at it because it actually helps. But the fact that there's no creativity or that people think they're slick or whatever the business, the, the non-emotional value to why people choose to do the things they do. I don't think they realize they're shooting themselves in the foot by being a copycat. And that's what some of our true school heads um, perceive type beats as. And that's why I did that discussion about type beats, because type beats aren't really that. They're not looking at a, a new song and remaking the new song. The copycat thing does exist. I mean, what is karaoke? You ever listen to a karaoke machine, how close and crazy accurate those beats are to the real one? Well, someone else made that. So there's a skill and a set of people who do that. Um, even like in love and hip hop and TV and commercials. I've heard a whole bunch of Scott Storch beats in those TV shows that Scott Storch shouldn't make. You know what I mean? So there's a time and place, but tight beats is a cultural phenomenon. It's how people look for music now, for or rappers look for beats on the internet that are from a certain age group. So you cannot not do that. But when it comes to just biting, it's that's a different energy. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to vampirize the attention. You're trying to bite into the vein of attention and flow numbers. And you're thinking piggybacking that's going to catapult you and it doesn't. It, it, it's not as effective, even if the numbers appear to be there, the interaction isn't. Because people are hip to it. <laughs> and that's how I know people are copying me. Because the viewer, the person who cares, the person who's learning, or the person who's just being entertained, they're like, yo, MG, why did this person copy your scalar video? Or, yo, MG, why did this person copy your halftime video? Or, yo, MG, why did this person copy? Like, I get so many of those, it's kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it's dumb scary because I don't have the numbers. So if I have the impact that way, how are you finding me? You're finding me because you're copying me. And you're going to keep finding the new videos I do because you keep using my keywords. You keep using my plugins. And they're not even mine, per se, because there's tutorials that exist before I do it, too. But the way they do it, it marries our uh, algorithm together, and it's pretty bad. Um, So that's why I kind of went left. That's why the answer abstract. Abstract was like, yo, we could do some of this stuff that's uh, underserved. But what's happening is that everyone else is doing that now. So me getting a push, too will be unique to the fact that the people who wish to parallel my efforts, they're going to have to pay $800 to do that. And then that's going to have to be a conscious decision and them asking, is it worth it? Is copying me worth investing $800 into a new piece of equipment that you're going to have to learn and then teach content the same way I do? It's not. Because you put that $800 in the ads and steam right past me. And that's part of that focus. Um, I don't have the focus to grow like that. And that baffles a lot of people who talk business to me or who talk ideas and growth. I, I don't want everybody. <laughs> I wake up every day to new emails, new DMs, new comments, and I respond to all of them. That's my whole morning. These other people don't do that. So they don't understand how to measure their impact because they don't interact. And I've learned a long time ago from other walks of life that that's all we really have in this whole world is our value to the person that we reach or talk to. So when a person talks to you, you have to treat them with the same respect as if they were rich or poor. Like you just never know <laughs> who these people really are. Some people are pretending. A lot of these comments I'm sure are aliases um, for people who do YouTube tutorials looking for answers so they could do the video from people who are behind the scenes in the music industry just filling me out. Some of these are just like fake accounts from people who are just straight up stealing, you know, like it is what it is. Who cares? Like, but I, I still answer them the same regardless. There's some people here who are 
looking at my videos and going to other people's channels and jumping on their live streams and sharing the information with them. And then they come back to me and tell me that they're the ones stealing it. Like there's a lot of that social high school, middle school dynamic happening. Who cares what I care about? And I'm saying this to you because if you dare to do something on a bigger level of impact, you're going to have the same exact problem. So it's beautiful that I go through it and get the document. So you can see, well, I've heard of this before. MG talked about this or whoever, you know, talked about this. So it brings me to this. X marks the spot. This is a little bit more advanced. And I can't explain it in great detail because I don't understand it in great detail. I've always made this comment that human language is psychic. It can be, I should say. It's not always. It can be. So what this is, is a word cloud. And what I've done for this video is I've taken all the words sent to me in the past five days, whether it was a comment on YouTube or email. And what it does is it creates shapes or frequencies based on how often a word is used. And what I want to do is kind of change the color. You're not giving me a gradient, you lie. No, it's doing it. So yeah, the more often a word occurs, the bigger the word is. The smaller the word is, the less occurrences. So it's a gradient of words and how often people use them when talking to me. And what this has helped me do is understand what's happening on a week by week basis, I, I really should do this for the past year if I want to get really psychic about it. But just look some of the words that stand out thing. So I did a review on that thing that could just be a side effect of the name of the video, the that thing review. But thing stands out the most. So what is a thing, right? Like, how do you identify that in human vernacular? Like, what is a thing? It's a noun, right? So I kind of just put that in the back of my mind that people are talking about things. Then you look at other words like VSTs. A lot of people ask me questions about VSTs. So it makes sense. So why my string of most recent videos are VST reviews. People are still talking about trap. You notice trap is way bigger here than hip hop is like, where's hip hop? In fact, where's lo-fi? Where's low? Where's fi? There isn't. We're still in a paradigm where people are still learning how to make trap because most of the trap in music is what people are attracted to. But you'll notice something that's changing. Instead of it being melodies everywhere, there's chords. It stands out like a sore thumb. So I look at it, chopping, trap, chords, music. I don't know where C came from. I guess Jodeci, that's how I spelled it. But chop, chords, trap. Think about it. All of my videos are how to chop up a sample in Serato and how to add your own chords to it. I call it just blazing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's other producers who do it, but for how I box it, I call it you just blazing samples. You know, you're composing with your sample. Chop, chords, trap. People are now adding chords and sample chops to trap on a bigger scale, and it's transforming trap. So in, in reality, trap is not dying. It's transforming into East Coast hip hop. Hence, why at the last of my last video, I put the Jay-Z remix they killed me for that too, by the way. The dag daggone algorithm, like the moment I hit publish on the video, the copyright infraction came right away. And what's strange about that is I've done it before. And the Jodeci one, I didn't get any flack for it because it's not the music. But with the Jay-Z acapellas, they are running that through that database. Stay woke. Now I know. <laughs> be good or be good at it. But anyway, I didn't mind it. I'm going to keep the video up. But that's why I did that demonstration because it's exactly that. What all these words mean is what that song is or that remix is. Because I knew at some point I was going to show you guys this. But anyway, look at the other one. Scalar. That makes sense. Right above it is help. <laughs> so what do you need help with? I need help with scalar. I need help with thinking on how to edit samples. And I want to know that thing. Work. Like you could read it because how much comments and emails I put into this for the past week. It's like. It's a sea of words that make sense. It tells me where I'm at with it. A lot of people are saying super. A lot of people are saying really and good. 
just VSTs, a style in theory, um, Serato in great, thanks, tracks, Ableton Live, you will soon see. Like you can, <laughs> this is so creepy that like I said, it'll probably go over a lot of heads, but it's humans giving me these words. These aren't just random words. These are like what people are saying to me. And this is what you're really saying to me. Whatever this thing is that I'm doing, I can just look at the peripher peripheral vision of it and see. And of course you can go deeper into it. You can zoom in. A lot of people say bro. I don't know what a C day is. That's interesting that it combined those, but they're not, it's not the one word, it's two words. Nice videos. You know VSTs, man. Backtrack, which is interesting about backtracking. Um, that's what people are asking me to do in my YouTube comments. When people don't have a very specific method for my madness or how they want to utilize my knowledge, they come out when I change paths and then ask me to backtrack. Super presets. There's a lot you could take out of this. Remix Sense Trap. It's weird. It's weird how you could use this. It's uh, and, and and the reason why I know this is that I know I know businesses that use this. I know businesses that use this for marketing, and it works. <laughs> so I use it to guide myself. I use it to guide myself occasionally because I do this in my head. Like I look at what people are saying to me and uh, cross it out in my head. Whereas this allows you to copy and paste it as a, you can save it as an image. Like you can file, export it as a JPEG or PNG and just remind yourself like for the month of January, this was the frequency and wave of human attention about what I do or what I post. And you could do the same thing with like, if you have something on Amazon, you could do this to your Amazon reviews and find out what people really think in an abstract way. Um, you can do this with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I don't even want to talk about because it gets kind of Russian hacking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it gets into those keywords. But um, I wanted to show you this. So, you know, you know, it's MG, you know what I'm about. I'm, I'm on a different wavelength when it comes to information. So it's hard for me to unpack this without showing you, I guess. I guess well, I'm showing you a tool that lets you see how I think. And it's not 100 percent, but it's better than 50. Trust me, it's better than 50 percent when you're able to part of it is how your brain reacts to it too. Like, how do you look, how do I perceive this vocabulary? What does it mean when someone says it to me, the viewer? What do I see? What is the soon about? What is soon? No, what is it connected to? If we do it like the circle of fifths or the color wheel, what's opposite of soon? Hop, give hop, soon give or soon hop or soon glad. Just else, man. Super time. Tracks. We'll come. Back to the process. We'll be fire pro. Pro fire. So I guess pretty soon I want to create a very super tr track that's going to be on a professional level and it's going to be fire. Yeah. Why not? Because <laughs> they're psychic. But anyway, off that. Um, There's a lot of other comments too. And what's cool is that a lot of comments are not comments at all. It's just a lot of people showing me support and saying, yo, that remix was dope or the lesson was dope or this is crazy or thank you. And I appreciate those too, because it's visibility. It's an acknowledgement that I posted something like sick as usual, right? Like that's an acknowledgement statement that, you know, you get that dopamine, you get happy and you're like, wow, my video still impacts people. And you have to find that for what you do. And that's just the last part of this discussion, really, because I, I think the word cloud thing probably blew up enough brain molecules. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you have to find a thing in your journey that's effortless. If there was ever a secret, that is it. 
what comes naturally to you? What is effortless? Like for me, math is not effortless. Um, the reason why I'm not a computer programmer and app developer instead of what I do is because the math is not effortless. Um, I sidetrack too much mentally when I think about numbers. Um, I look at numbers in an abstract way. Um, I could solve the problems, but it takes me a very long time because it becomes like reading a book you're not interested in. And then a paragraph just sends your mind racing into a set of thoughts and then your imagination vehicle turns on. Math does that to me. So it's not effortless. I don't know how to zone in on math. Whereas words, I can zone in like as I've shown on words and it'll focus and focus and focus. Music, I can zone in with my ears and get a piece of paper and focus, focus, focus and transcribe and hear all the drum sounds and now I have tools where I can mute certain elements and I can hear more and I can hear the things I've been missing for the past decade. You got to find a thing that allows you to do that, to dive deep into something. You know, like a lot of people are good with their hands. They build with the Legos. They, they play outside to get their hands dirty. They build and fix cars, tree houses, and like they're very tactile. You know, it doesn't, it makes sense to why they would become an engineer or something where they have to build or an architect or someone who's a carpenter. I'm not though. Like my girlfriend helped me build my desk. That's how not I am a carpenter. That's how garbage I am at twisting a screwdriver. <clears throat> but the stuff that we put on the desk, ask me about that, different story. Ask her about that, different story. So you got to find what's effortless to you and then just do that. <laughs> just do that. Are you the type of person that can hear dope samples all the time? Like Sicario, he sent me this dope sample and now I go to his Instagram, he always has dope samples. Well, if you're like him, why are you trying to learn how to play piano? There's still a time and place for the dope samples and those beats and those artists. Double down on that and see where that takes you. What can you do with that? Can you create a service where you're digging samples for other people? There's plenty of people like that. Can you get with a band and recreate samples instead? Definitely. If you want to enterprise it, think of Frank Dukes. Um, well, you want to create your own playlist because you have such a dope taste in samples. Maybe you also have a dope taste in regular music too. That's latent. You should be able to put a playlist together and monetize it. A lot of people do. Um, there's a lot of ways to dive deep into what's effortless to you. Don't do it because I'm doing it. Don't do it because he's doing it. Do it because it's effortless. That's why it's like, you know, you're lucky if you find, if you find work in what you love. The, the word love is very interesting because it changes and it hinges on hate so fast. So instead of saying love, say effortless. It'd be dope if you made money for what comes effortless to you. This way you get the romance out of it. It's just effortless. Like tattoo artists, drawing is effortless. <laughs> it's just, that's, it's, that's it. That's the secret. And I think you don't want to misplace your goals and your ambitions and things that are cool. You want to find out what's effortless and make what's effortless cool. So hopefully that helps you um, if you're trying to move forward in what your craft is. Or if you're a YouTube person who wants to make original videos. Cover the stuff that's effortless. You ain't got to ever worry about me or the next person or the guy over there who's self-destructing because he has too much attention. Um... What else? What other wisdom does I have? A lot of stuff on my mind. That's half my problem. I overthink. Always take a tally of your uh, weaknesses too. I know what my weaknesses are as a musician. All my VSTs reflect what my weaknesses are. Um, I know what my weaknesses are as far as graphics. Um, that's why I have all the tools that I have for them. Da -da. from hit film to affinity to like 20 different websites I can use for filters um, I know why I'm making remixes because I can't work with the real artists <laughs> or I can't get artists on the same page to work with them normally you don't have to do remixes if you're selling beats why even waste your time good luck lining up the acapella with your procession though 
especially if you're using Ableton Live. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna <laughs> create this whole new headache uh, if that's not what you do effortlessly or there's no cause for it. Um, same thing with composing and people asking me how to compose at a level higher than me. Like they're asking questions that are beyond my scope of support. I can't help you with that. And to be honest with you, you can't answer that question until you get this other stuff down. <laughs> That's why it doesn't make sense to you. Everything has an order of operations, a level. And a lot of people want to be here, but they don't want to take the steps to get there. They just want to be there. They just want to teleport up. And I think that's all human nature because we sense our mortality through time. But when it comes to mastery and skills, time is your asset. Time is your friend. Spending the time doing what you're supposed to do. So like when you finish listening to this and like your brain gave you a whole bunch of stuff that you could be doing different, like you should write it down to get it out of your brain. And then once you have it written down and you go eat a sandwich or you go see your mom or whoever you're going to do today, come back to that list and start transforming it into actions and then speaking it and then sharing that idea publicly to get better feedback, to refine it and then execute Monday. Time is your friend. You, you can give it three days before you act, but you, what you don't want to do is give it three years. And that ties it all back to what my cousin was saying. How much time has passed versus efforts and results on that original thing. So think about that. Hopefully that helps you. You know, you don't need to buy another plugin today. But I do want to challenge you to buy the plugins or kits or loops that make your job effortless so you can be proficient and that you could also start seeing your blessings and breakthroughs occur or the or the the, the crack in the clouds start to break a little bit, you know, whether that's doing stuff for the commercials or whether that's doing stuff, you know, just for content creators. There's a, there's a million, a, a million and uh, what is it called? 101 Dalmatians. There's 101 ways to get to it through music, man. Just don't, just don't be me. Don't take a, I think this is why I can say it better than anyone else. Lex Luger, when he was working with Waka Flocka, he was a teenager. His biggest records came after two years of producing. So those two years for me, 2001, I lost in a hard drive crash. 2002 and 2003 is right after that. I combined them because it wasn't a lot of work. But they were finished works. So that means in 2004, Gucci Man and Waka Flocka should be here. But it isn't. It's scores and scores and scores of beats that no one remembers today. I can jump 10 of those five times the amount of time that it took for Lex Luger and come to 2014. And scores and scores and scores and scores of projects and beats that no one's ever gonna hear or care about. Right, right. I can do that more. I can jump in between eras of music in my own creations across time more than people who make it today have spent time ever doing it. And I say that to say, don't be me. Because <laughs> obviously it doesn't take as much analytical thought power and process and procedure and technicality to make it if your goal and ambition is to make it. They don't take you 18 years of music. Listen to the music. <laughs> if I do it in five minutes, it's not because I'm great. It's not because I spent 20 years making it. It's because it's five minutes worth of music that people are marketing. It's five minute music that plays for two minutes and 30 seconds. It takes twice as long to make it, to play it. It takes half as much to make it, to play it kind of thing. Anyway, there's numbers in that. But um, yeah, it don't take a lot of effort. The difference though, between me and them is that those people, that generation, those circles of energy, those people in Atlanta, where the culture and the you can do it comes from, where the funding and the bankroll and the 
this artist is going to get it popping because he has the money to get it popping. All of that is part of a deeper network that doesn't look like 20 years of beats. It looks like 20 years of relationships and street culture. It looks like 20 years of something mom did. It looks like 20 years of what Big Brother did. It looks like 20 years of Big Meech. <laughs> it's different. It's very different. It can go deeper than that. But yeah, it, it don't take no one this long to make it. If what you want to do is make it, just get focused on what comes effortlessly to you. I did not. What became effortless to me is that my ability to learn and have passion for learning all of it. That was effortless to me. It was effortless for me to go. Free Loops is dope. I make beats like that. Fuck that. I'm going to do something different. <laughs> That's not effortless to some people. It's effortless for me to jump into Cubase Studio One and come back to Sonar and go, I know why this sucks. I know why you like that. I get why the people who make techno use that. That's effortless to me. I don't know what that means as a business, but it's effortless. It's effortless for me to go, all right, today I'm sampling soul. I know where to find the best soul samples ever and reverse engineer it and find something rare. It's effortless. The Jay-Z remix took me seven minutes. It's effortless. But doing the Hans Zimmer stuff, I don't have none of that in the past 18 years. I don't have any orchestra scores. I didn't even try it. I have nothing that changes key three times because that's not effortless to me. I don't have anything that's exotic in terms of uh, leaving the Western scales because that's not effortless to me. So locate that, save some time. It don't take this much. All of this has shown me is that I can do this channel. So don't be me. Trust me. You're going to regret it. But anyway, I'm MG the Future. Thank you for joining me, dealing with my little discussion, rant, tirade. Uh, what do they call that? Uh, flowing streams of consciousness. Shout out to Mr. West. But I hope it does impact some of you to get to actions. Thank you. Until next time, peace.